Next is question number 10.22. It is a series of uh, conversion reactions. So here the first question is what happens when N-butyl bromide is treated with alcoholic potash? So N-butyl chloride is nothing but CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. So I have a butyl chain and N-butyl chloride is just the last carbon containing chloride. So here I have N-butyl chloride. Now this one is treated with alcoholic potash. In one of the videos I have clearly told you the difference between an alcoholic potash and an aqueous potash, aqueous KOH. Alcoholic KOH will act as a base and aqueous potash is aqueous uh, KOH is going to act as a nucleophile. Now in this case it is going to act as a base for sure. Alright, so there's only one set of reaction that you've learned where you have an alkyl halide and the presence of aqueous alcoholic potash. The reaction will take place in the presence of a rule which is called Sadzeff's rule. As per the rule, it says that when the uh, OH acting as a base is going to pick up a hydrogen, it's going to pick it up from the carbon that contains least number of hydrogen atoms. So this is this particular rule is also applied uh, when we talk about beta elimination. I'll tell you why it's beta elimination. The halogen is bonded to a carbon that's called alpha carbon. Alpha carbon is bonded to a carbon that is beta carbon. Now, sales of rule will apply when I have more than one beta carbon. If it is just one beta carbon, then definitely from that beta carbon, the alcoholic potash has to abstract a proton. But in this case, since we have only one uh, beta carbon, it's easy for us to extract a hydrogen from there. A halogen will also move out. Between carbon number 1 and carbon number 2, you're going to form an alkene. So here, you are going to form butene as your product with elimination of KCl and H2O. So the hydrogen that came out from here will pick up with, will bond with OH to give H2O. Cl minus will go with K to form KCl. So you will form an alkene in this case, butene as your product.